Almost two years ago, we published a video on the 1975 film Wolf Guy, starring Sony Chiba and directed by Kazuhiko Yamaguchi. This director, relatively unknown in the US, spent the better part of the 1970s directing program pictures for Toei. Most of these films were action-oriented, a number of which starred Chiba, or at least included him in a supporting role. We bring all of this up because despite Yamaguchi's filmography remaining largely obscure to us Westerners, Aero Video has helped remedy this by publishing one of the several series on which he worked. Earlier this week, the company released the Sister Street Fighter collection on Blu-ray, containing four films and a smattering of extras to whet the appetites of action fans at large. These films are definitely not for everyone, but if you're into hokey 70s martial arts flicks with overblown drama, threadbare plots, and the occasional instance of ridiculous gore, you need look no further than Sister Street Fighter. The series premiered in 1974 with the self-titled first film, starring Etsuko Shihomi as Koryu, a Chinese-Japanese martial arts champion employed by the Japanese police to assist in cracking an especially tough case. Off-screen, Shihomi met Sony Chiba through his training program, the Japan Action Club. Through this connection, she got her start acting for Toei in some of their early 70s action films, even landing a part in one of Chiba's big vehicles, the Street Fighter. With the success of this film, it only made sense for Shihomi to helm her own franchise, aptly named Sister Street Fighter. Only six months following the Chiba film in which Shihomi played a support, Shihomi's film in which Chiba played a support was released to theaters. As we've discussed a number of times before, this was a tough time for the Japanese film industry, and the important element to the studios was putting films on screens and getting butts in seats. This meant that this type of film had a short journey from pen to screen, which in turn meant that Sister Street Fighter's two sequels and one unofficial follow-up were all released within two years. Much like Kazuhiko Yamaguchi, Shihomi spent the better part of this decade churning out films for Toei. This meant that her portrayal of Koryu in Sister Street Fighter is far from her only film role, but one which has remained one of her more popular characters. Getting back to the films themselves, the first three are fairly straightforward in their goals and approaches, meaning that they can all be summarized without spoilers quite easily. In all three, there is some variation on the following. Koryu is solicited by a crime-fighting agency, thanks to her aptitude in fighting and her unassuming nature as a civilian woman, in order to take down a gang of Japanese ruffians. These ruffians typically have a connection with the disappearance of someone close to Koryu. They also regularly have control over some aspect of Koryu's life, or at least the life of her friends or family. Said ruffians are invariably led by a gang boss, who has an interest in collecting martial artists trained in various disciplines and with multiple weapons. Koryu must do battle with these numerous disposable henchpeople before coming face to face with the big bad himself, and attempting to settle the score once and for all. Like we said, these first three films, Sister Street Fighter, Hanging by a Thread, and The Return of the Sister Street Fighter are excessively formulaic, but for viewers interested in the period and the genre, that will ultimately be their appeal. Whether it's the absurd lengths to which the villains go to win the day, the grossly overstated blood and gore, or the blatant reuse of character actors, plot points, and motivations, there's something in this original trilogy that will no doubt charm many viewers. Others looking for a bit more substance will likely find what they seek in the spin-off fourth entry in the series, Fifth Level Fist. This entry, released in 1976, was led by Shigehiro Ozawa, director of the original Street Fighter film, rather than Kazuhiko Yamaguchi. Tonally and visually, Fifth Level Fist is thus different from its sister films right from the get-go. In this final entry, we join Shihomi as Kiku, rather than Koryu, a spry young woman attempting to get out of her parents' attempts at arranged marriage. As with the other films, she runs afoul of a drug-running operation, though this time around it's by circumstance rather than due to police solicitation. Two of her half-Japanese friends from Okinawa become embroiled in the operation and pay the price, drawing Kiku in so that she might avenge them. This, in turn, spirals into an international conspiracy plot that results in a giant set-piece battle involving a film studio backlot. Overall, Fifth Level Fist may be the best of the bunch in spite of not technically being a sister Street Fighter film. Thanks to its use of restraint with the blood and nudity, its inclusion of well-defined character motivations, and its inclusion of minor social commentary. 
All four films in the Sister Street Fighter collection are worth checking out for fans of Japanese cinema, action films, or 70s ridiculousness. Your mileage may vary with what you get out of each entry, but they're worth a look if they pique your interest. Etsuko Shihomi easily steals the show with her impressive displays of martial arts prowess and her emotive capabilities. The films truly could have been something more if the two middle entries hadn't tried to be as grimdark as they did, instead sticking to the campy atmosphere of the first and fourth. As they stand, however, the Sister Street Fighter collection is a fun, if troubled, romp through the mid-70s in a genre we have yet to explore super in-depth here on Cinemoney Pwn.